Content is king. And I'm sure many of you have heard that phrase. I think it comes out of the publishing industry. But what it means is that the content of whatever you create can sometimes make up for all the stuff that we worry about that's around that. And I have an example that I like to, a story I like to tell. I used to take pictures a lot. I used to do photography a lot. And mostly I took pictures of people. And mostly I took pictures of pretty women. Models to be specifically. <laughs> And when I was first learning to do this, I would go to a photo shoot and I'd take a bunch of pictures and I'd come back and I would sift through them and I would just, you know, hate all the pictures. And because I would look at them and I'd go, oh, you know, there's a telephone pole coming out of the side of her head. Why didn't I see that? The background's too busy. Her eyes are out of focus. Uh, you know, the exposure is wrong. And I would hate it, but I would go through and I'd pick the best ones I had, like three or four of the best ones. And I would do a little tweaking to try and make up for my mistakes. And then I would print them out and I would show them to people. And I would show them to my guy friends and they would go, that picture is awesome! And I would be like, that picture is not awesome, she's out of focus. And they would be like, no, it's awesome! Well, it was awesome because content is king and it had a pretty girl in it. Okay, so content was king. And I think when you're creating stuff, you kind of have to remember that. And you have to put the content first. So, in my, the game my company is making, what we have a code name for is, we call it Guardian, we have to always think first about that game, about the content, about how good it is, how much fun it is to play, how easy it is to use. We have to think about those, those things first and foremost. And because of special things about our game, we have to choose not to go free to play. Now, you may not be familiar with the term free-to-play. It's a, a current trend in video games where basically you give your game away. And lots and lots of people come and play your game for free. And of those 10,000 people that come play your game for free, 9,899 of them are never going to pay you a cent. But the other 100, at some point along the way, will, will, will decide to pay you to go faster in the game or just to buy special things, you know, clothing for your character, weapons, any kind of thing like that. So that's where you'll make your money. It turns out it's a pretty good model, and it's been really successful, especially in the mobile market. But the problem is that for Guardian, you cannot have 9,899 people who start to play your game and stop. Because if you do, for the other 100 people, their game is going to be broken. There's going to be, a, in our, our particular case, things go on in the environment that all the players play in is shared by everybody. And so if this clogged up with a bunch of people who played for two days and disappeared, then the game isn't going to be good. And that is our primary reason for not being free to play. So once you decide you're not going to be free, then you have to start thinking about <coughs> pricing. And so I want to talk a little bit about pricing. And I want to point out that there is a huge difference between cost and value. And most people think you should set your price based on cost, but that is completely and totally wrong. And let me give you another little story here about the difference between cost and value. Say I were going to build, I had a product, I was going to build a machine, and this machine would cut off your pinky. Okay, now this machine cost me 10 cents to build. Okay, but that doesn't matter, because to everybody in this room, there's no value in that machine. You do not want to buy that machine. I can give you that machine and you do not want it. Now, you know, that value proposition might change if you had some kind of weird specific pinky cancer and needed to amputate your pinky. Well, then that machine's value would go up for you. But it would have nothing to do with how much it costs to build it. Now, let's say I build another machine. Now, this machine is a little box and uh, this machine you open it up, and you put an a, a, a ounce of gold in it, you close it, you push a button, you open it again, and you can take 10 ounces of gold out. Okay? This machine, doesn't matter what it costs, right? It, it could cost 10 cents. I'm not going to sell it to you for 20 cents, right? Because that would be stupid. I'm going to sell it to you for the value, because anything you put in this machine will return tenfold. So its value is effectively infinite. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it costs me 10 cents to build that machine or $10 million to build that machine, I can charge anything I want for it. At least until the bottom drops out of gold. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big difference between value and cost. And the only time cost should influence your pricing, which should be based completely on value, is when you can't get enough people to value your product enough to cover your costs. 
And in that case, your product should just never get made. So as a, as a game producer, as a, an artist, I have to believe in the value of my product enough to be willing to say it's going to cost you something to use it. And I think you're going to get more value out of that product than what we're going to charge you. Um, there are some very specific things with free to play that we need to talk, we need to deal with. That, that one is that it allows you to try before you buy, which is a great thing, and we need to figure out a way to allow people to try our product before we buy it. The other is that it is trendy, so everybody's doing it, everybody's talking about it, so we need to, we, we're not necessarily going to jump on that train, but we have to acknowledge that that is an actual possibility. So those are the reasons that Reactuate Games is not choosing to be free to play. And I would be willing to take any questions that anyone might have to ask. Yes? How much are you planning on? Um, at this point, I'm just going to say we don't know. You know, I have an employee, and she will not allow me to say I don't know about things that I'm supposed to make the decision on. <laughs> so, like, if she asks me, do you want this thing to be red or blue, I'm like, I don't know. She's like, no, 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 you, you don't get to say I don't know. You have to make the decision. But in this case, I'm going to say I don't know because we don't have enough data yet. Uh, and, but I do know that it is better to have a few good customers than a surfeit of of bad customers. <laughs> so pricing, sometimes you can use pricing to make sure you get good customers who actually care about your product and not bad customers who just want something for free. Any other questions? I have one. Yes? Can you tell me what the uh, pleasure is in doing this? <laughs> <laughs> You mean in making a video game company or in playing video games? In, well, both, really. <laughs> my, uh, my grandsons do this all the time, and it drives me absolutely wild. Katie, you like to read? I love to read. Just sitting around staring at a bunch of words on a piece of paper? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it really is. It's, it's one of those things that's hard to explain. It's when, you, when people enjoy a particular art form, and other people don't enjoy that art form, it's impossible to, to, to explain it to the other people. Um, you know, your, your sons may or may not enjoy reading, and you're like, but the books, they're so much fun, and you're like, the video games are so much fun, and it's the same thing, right? It, it's just, people love different things, and that's just the way it is. Any other questions? How marketable is that going to be to do to, without the... To do without the free-to-play? Uh, I think that it will cause us problems. But I think it's definitely doable. It's not like free to play is every game in the universe, right? I had people, I was, we were at the grocery store last night, and I said, not only am I buying kale, I'm also doing product research while I listen to the three produce guys talk about the last video games they bought and standing in line to buy a PS4. And I mean, here, here guys work in produce at the grocery store. I work produce at the grocery store. These people do not make a lot of money. Um, and yet they were talking about standing in line to buy a $500 game console and then uh, how they bought a $70 game and, and sat down for like a, two days to finish it. You know? So it's not like price is, a, the, a lot of times you say that to people and they're like, well, I can't afford that. And I'm like, did you buy Advanced Call of Duty Advanced Warfare? Because that thing cost 60 bucks and I know it did. You know? Are you playing this on a console? Yeah, everybody spends their money where they get value out of it, right? So I'm going to, we're gonna focus on the people who get value out of what we do. Any 